Hello everyone, and welcome back to Revis Snippets. Great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. It's another nice and quick one today. We'll be looking at how to create custom annotation symbols for our grid bubbles and level heads. As you can see, I have a few on screen now. So this one is the default Revit one. I can then change the size of that bubble, make it smaller or bigger, or I can change the appearance of the grid bubble completely to add additional elements that I need. Same for levels. Is it just me, or can we all agree that the default level head in Revit is just ugly? Let me see that again. This is what you get with the application by default. Really strange, I have never seen any project using this. So now we can use either that one there, a custom one, or go even a bit further and create this second custom one as well. Alright, enough talking, let's get creating. I wanna now close this file. And then we can open the sample project again. Next step, let's go to the same elevation. We'll change those elements to be custom. Starting with this grid bubble. If I now select one of them here, I can see that under type properties, the symbol it's using now is M underscore grid head circle. If you try to edit this symbol here, you cannot because this is just a pick list. So what we can do now is copy this name and then find it later to edit it. Simply highlight this whole name there and then press Ctrl C to copy. I can now close this window. Go to my project browser, click anywhere and then press Ctrl F. That's the shortcut for opening the search box. If you don't like the shortcut, just right click on any item on this element tree and select search. We can now paste in the name that we copied from before. And when you do next, it will jump on to that location for you where you can see the family down there. We can now close the search box, select the family, and then simply right click and choose edit. It's here now where I can start drawing my custom annotation for this grid bubble. Let's say I want to create a bit more details in this family. I can go to create, line, and maybe draw a second circle to enclose the first one and then draw another one to cover the first both. Now I can start drawing my center lines going from the center out. Maybe four of them will do. And then finally delete the last circle. All right, we can now save this as a new family because we don't want to override the default Revit one. Let's call this one custom grid head number one. And now it's time to load it back into the project. It's loaded, nothing seems to happen, but it's loaded. I can now select one of those grid lines. Go to edit type now, duplicate it to make a new type. And let's call this one custom one. It's time now for me to go here. And certainly enough, my custom grid head family is there for me to select. We can now click OK to see the result. That's much better already. We can now select the other grid lines quickly by getting one of them. Right click and do select all instances in the entire project. It's time now for me to change them into using this new custom type. And there you have them. Let's now do the same for level heads. So if I pick on this one there, that's a default one. I can now go back to edit type. And just like with grid bubbles, I can now see the symbol has been set to a certain family. And apparently I cannot edit this straight from here. I need to highlight its name, Ctrl C to copy, close the window, go to here, do a search for that same name, Ctrl V to paste it there. And there you have it. We can now right click there on the family name and choose edit one more time. Now with this one, it's a bit more confusing than with the grid bubble family because sometimes it's hard to know where the level line will go into the symbol. I can kind of guess because I can see the name text and the elevation text is there. So maybe the line is going this way, coming into the symbol like that. But if you want to be extra sure, you can go to visibility and graphics, press VV to open it, change to the annotation tab, and then turn on reference planes. Now you can see, this point here where the two reference planes intersect, that's where the 
level line will end and the level head will begin. With the knowledge, let's start drawing this symbol again. I can now delete whatever there at the moment. And just draw the first type that I can think of. Let's go to create and make a field region. How about we create this triangle there. Make sure that's solid black. And then I can mirror this to the other side and make that a white rectangle. Alright, now apparently our text shouldn't be there anymore. We can now put them on top of this new annotation. I can now load this into a project, but let's save it first with a good name. Let's call this one custom level head number 3. And then load it into the file. It's loaded already, but to see it I need to now select one of those level head. Go back to edit type now, and then change the symbol parameter to reference my new custom level head. There we go, the text is now on top of my triangles. They are kind of overlapping now because of the view scale, so let me just quickly hide one of those. Now apparently you can keep doing this for different level head types, another one I have is here. So let's say if I can try and use it in our project. Maybe do it for these two. Let's call this one custom number two. And then change that to use level head to custom. It looks fine, but as you can see, sometimes you have to do a few more tweaking because now the text isn't centered on our level head symbol. If I go back to the family now, I can show you how to fix that. Select the text labels now. And the properties, change the horizontal align property to middle or center. Now you can bring this back into the project. And everything should work out. Alright, in the next video, I'll show you how to customize the look and feel of elevation markers, section heads, and call out bubbles. They follow a slightly different approach. So make sure to subscribe to this channel to get the new tutorial as soon as it's online. For now, practice the new skill and I'll see you in the next video.